Okay, I made it to the mine. You can see there's uh, two portals to it. Well, these are actually the two lower portals. There's um, one right there, and there's one right here, but oddly enough, I don't remember this one being open the last time I was here. So uh, someone must have dug this one out, and uh, it looks like it as well. There's kind of like a trench in there. But uh, I'm not gonna enter the mine through either of these portals because uh, this one is gated and this one, I know there's like a collapse in there, about 30 feet. So the portal that I'm gonna enter the mine with is up here. It's the upper portal of the mine and uh, it's still open. It's just right up here. And so there's the upper portal and I'm gonna get my gear on and then go into the darkness. Okay, I just made it inside the mine and you can see it was gated at one point, but this gate has been cracked open for a while because uh, there'd be no way to close it with all this dirt here. But anyways, immediately inside, this mine has a Y intersection. You can see it goes that way and it goes straight ahead. So um, I'm gonna go straight ahead first. It looks like there's a some metal stuff right here. I don't know what this is. Okay, right here to the left is a small drift. You can see there's some bottles right there and a bunch of metal shelving, I'm guessing. That's kind of interesting. And right here, there's a, there's a bunch of nails on the ground. And I'm gonna continue down this drift. Well, it ends right here, so uh, I'm gonna go back to that intersection and go down the left-hand tunnel. Okay, I'm back at the uh, junction. Right there's the gate, and right here's the left-hand drift. And I think someone was uh, reworking this mine in the 80s. I think that's when they were doing it, but uh, you can see they set up electric power lines in here. And right there's a light switch. So they uh, must have had electric lights in here. And uh, I'm gonna go down this drift. My voice is uh, echoing inside here, so it must mean it's pretty stable. And right here, we have a drop off. It drops about a foot maybe into this chamber. Okay. So, this is a drift going off to the right, and to the left, there's a massive collapse. Um, mining reports said that there were some uh, stopes or uh, shafts that went up to the surface. So I'm guessing that it was at this point, because uh, rocks are usually the most unstable at the surface, so all of this probably just came down. But, uh, oh wow. Up here, there's um, a stope chamber. A stope is just a spot where they remove a large chunk of ore from the vein. And you can see the quartz vein right there. So that was what they were chasing, but uh, luckily the branch to the right is still open. Oh wow, look at this, there's a winds. That is cool. And there's a ladder, so I'm definitely gonna be going down there. And across the winds, it doesn't go too far. But at the face of this drift, you can see the vein of ore that they were mining. Okay, here's looking back from where I came from. And I'm gonna go uh, descend this ladder down to the uh, lower level. So uh, wish me luck. Okay, I just got done descending this ladder. Here's uh, looking up to the level I was at before. It's about uh, maybe a 15, 
foot drop. And uh, I checked the ladder thoroughly before climbing down it, and it, it seems pretty safe, but uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend anyone else doing it. And there's a drift going off this way, and one going off this way. But I think I'm going to go this way first. You can see there appears to be another wind is right here. Uh, it's all covered with boards. Okay, look at that. It goes down there about uh, 10 feet. And uh, this actually isn't a winds. It's actually called an underhand stope. And like I said earlier, stoping is when they uh, remove a body of ore, but underhand stoping is when they remove it below a drift level. And uh, it's a lot less common because I guess it's harder to do than overhand stoping. So uh, I'm going to make my way over here. And it appears there seems to be another uh, wind. And right here is one of the uh, hubs for a light bulb. Okay, so the tunnel dead ends straight ahead, about 30 feet down there. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's just a pile of boards. And right here is a massive winds. Looks like it goes down there about uh, 50 feet. Maybe, hopefully I can get a good shot down there. It doesn't look like there's any drifts down there. It just seems to be a dead end. Okay, here we go. The camera's finally focusing. So yeah, that's what it looks like down there. And I'm definitely not going to cross this narrow ledge to get over there because it just dead ends, first of all, and I do not want to fall down there. That would not be a good day. So I'm going to go back to where the ladder is and I'm going to continue down the other side of the drift. There's a lot of uh, rodent droppings in these mines. So if you're wondering why my voice is a little muffled, it's because I'm wearing a dusk mask because there's risks with rodent droppings like Hantavirus and other crap you don't want. So it's just a good precaution I take. And the tunnel kind of twists and turns right here. On the, um, the back of the mine, a back is a term for the roof of the mine. There's some survey tags. So uh, someone was doing some surveying over here at one time. And this drift right here, off to my left, this actually connects to that, that one um, lower portal that I said had a collapse about 30 feet inside. So if you go down here maybe 40 feet or something, you'll run into that collapse. But uh, I might check it out on the way back. But in the, mean, in the meantime, I'm going to keep going down here. This section of the mine is very wet. There's some uh, water dripping down. And the ground is really muddy. I don't know if you can hear it smushing under the weight of, weight of me. Hold on. Okay, we reached another junction. Off to the left is the one lower portal that I said was gated. You can see daylight right here, but uh, if the other portal that I went in collapsed, you won't be able to get out because you're stuck in here. There's no way getting around this gate. So that's really cool, but uh, well, not if you got stuck, but just the fact that there's another entrance to this mine. And going over here, you can see it just dead ends right here. So, um, that's the end of this mine. It's a really interesting one. And I'm definitely glad that I was able to explore it and show it to you guys. That's looking where I came from. Okay, so I opted not to go into that small drift that connects to that collapsed portal. 
because the uh, entrance is really tight, a lot tighter than it looked on camera. So uh, I'm really sorry I didn't do that, but oh well. But uh, I'm right by the ladder, and for some reason I didn't point this out when I was here the first time, but right here you can see the massive quartz vein they're mining. It's about a, a foot and a half wide. But look at it. There's a lot of mineralization in here, so no wonder they were doing assessment work here and uh, mining this in the 80s, long after it last operated. And uh, I'm gonna go climb up this ladder and get out of here. Okay, I'm here below the two lowest adits, or previously thought to be lowest adits of the mine that I just explored, because right here, this is a uh, adit that must have been recently dug out, because the last time I was here, this was all filled in. But um, this shows up on an old mining map that I have of this area, and uh, I think this adit maybe goes back at max 100 feet, but it might re warrant a return trip where I redig this out because it's gotten a lot narrower since the last time it was dug out, I'm guessing. But uh, yeah, someone must have been doing some work here because this one was dug out in the right hand at it of the, I guess, the center portals was dug out. So thank you for your work, I guess. <laughs>